Hey, what's up guys? It's that time of year and winter's coming fast. Today I'm going to be building a greenhouse. I'm not building a greenhouse for plants. I'm building a greenhouse for a sunroom so we have somewhere to hang out during the winter to get sun. People spend thousands of dollars on infrared saunas. A greenhouse is a natural infrared sauna except it's way better since it utilizes and traps natural red and infrared light from the sun. Why can't you just sit indoors behind your window? Well, your glass windows block infrared light. The greenhouse plastic lets in the entire solar red and infrared spectrum of the sun. Red light, infrared light panels and beds are becoming popular for health. The research on these lights is pretty astounding, but they are still artificial lights that flicker our narrow spectrum and also emit EMF. They are usually 650 um, nanometer red light and 850 um, nanometer infrared light. The red and infrared spectrum of the sun is absolutely enormous compared. It goes from 600 to 3100 nanometer light. Um, there's no artificial lights that come even close to the complexity of the entire solar spectrum. I built a greenhouse last year. This year is going to be my second greenhouse, Greenhouse 2.0. I made some mistakes last year and I've learned from those mistakes and this year's greenhouse is going to be pretty epic. This year's greenhouse is going to be bigger and taller, so this year I can stand up without banging my head. This photo shows a comparison of last year's greenhouse versus the new and improved one. This year I made the roof slant steeper, so the snow will have an easier time sliding off the roof. Last year the roof wasn't slanted enough, so the snow would collect on the roof. During snowstorms I had to be around to bang off the snow, or else I was at risk of... Um, getting too much weight up there and the roof collapsing. This year I can leave town for a week and not worry about coming back to, you know, a collapsed roof and snow inside my greenhouse. Another mistake I made was last year I put the door in front of the greenhouse so the snow would fall off the roof and then collect in front of the door, which made it hard to get in and out. Um, and then also sometimes when you got out, the snow would fall or if it was raining out, the, s the rain would actually... Um, come off the roof and had an easier time because one place that's susceptible to getting water in the greenhouse is at the door. So this year I put it on the side and I made it much bigger. So as you can see, um, I've already actually started to build this and then I decided I should record for YouTube. But what I've done is you now I've started to kind of figure out the dimensions. I ripped off some of the nice wood. Um, off the top of my privacy wall and put in, you know, kind of scrap wood that I can screw into and I don't mind if it gets damaged. And then I'm making a little bit of extension on the end of it so that it's just a little bit longer. But really all I'm doing is creating a box out of two by fours, put a roof on it, and then the hard part comes when I, when I wrap it with uh, um, greenhouse plastic. These are really the only two tools I used, a uh, circular handsaw and a uh, power drill. Uh, both I got for, I think under 80 bucks each um, at Lowe's. They're pretty, yeah, I got pretty cheap ones and they work fine. The most expensive part of the greenhouse is the greenhouse plastic um, I ordered from Amazon. It's polyethylene plastic. Um, this year I ordered 24 by 25 foot long, so it's a good amount of plastic for my bigger greenhouse this year. Last year I used about half as much and uh, the price was a lot cheaper. The wood, I spent about $50 last year on wood to build the greenhouse and this year I spent about 20 because I'm reusing a lot of the wood from last year's. All right, so starting to build the greenhouse. As you can see, my dog Pepper was my uh, little helper throughout these videos. Um, really, I don't have any plans. I'm just kind of at raw estimating what size I want. Um, and I'm working on creating the main box for the greenhouse. And you could have this be however big you want, uh, just depending on what you want to put inside the greenhouse. You could even have a one person greenhouse with one chair um, so I finished that up that was um, the easy part but also the hardest part because you just gotta get started once you get started uh, it starts to come together and you get better ideas um, of what it's gonna look like but one thing I recommend is having the edges line up as best as possible and as smooth um, 
just because it allows you to put on the greenhouse plastic easier. That's what I learned from last year. I had some overhanging edges and it caused it to be hard to put um, the plastic on. So now comes the hard part, which is constructing the roof. I used one by fours instead of two by fours, thinner boards that are lighter for the roof because it allows more light to come through. If I use thick boards, it would block some of the sun um, coming through the roof. And also the hard thing that I did was I created a joint at the top of the roof to allow a retractable roof. So it actually can tilt open and allow full spectrum light and cool air because there's some days it gets too hot. I recommend sticking with um, a solid roof when you first get started just because the roof I built that slants open is a little more difficult. Okay, onto the fun part. We're gonna start wrapping the greenhouse in this plastic that I bought from Amazon. Um, you're also gonna need polyethylene tape or um, you can Google greenhouse repair tape or window repair tape. You can find window repair tape at any hardware store, but you're gonna use that to patch any holes or um, anywhere where air or water can get into the greenhouse. Um, so now I'm laying out the greenhouse plastic. I'm gonna be very careful to measure and um, cut it for what I need uh, because I don't have a lot of extra greenhouse plastic. And what I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna wrap the plastic from um, the top all the way around the greenhouse. So you're actually gonna have the plastic um, on the floor, uh, on the back, all of it's gonna be one solid piece of plastic. So you don't have a lot of taping um, or a lot of areas where water or air can leak in. Um, and then these are the screws I'm using. I'm using roofing screws. I like these because they come with a rubber washer. Um, they're just the right length. Uh, the rubber washer, once you screw it in the plastic, um, seals the plastic so no water can leak in. And I use these in combination with a staple gun. Um, the staple gun's nice, but the staples, the plastic can rip straight through the staples. So in combination, it works great. So now I'm going through and tightening down the plastic as I uh, put in the screws in combination with the staples. And it's a lot of work, but it's actually pretty easy to get this plastic um, really taut and tight so that um, you don't have these creases. But it just takes a little bit of work. And, but overall, uh, Putting down the plastic is pretty easy. The roof can be a little difficult just because of the height. There's actually a point where I almost, um, the ladder almost slipped out. But as you can see here, I'm starting to lay down things inside. Um, I lay down the plastic uh, carpet and put in furniture. I gotta move that cold tub inside the greenhouse um, all by myself, so that's fun. Um, and we're kind of rushing to get this done before three days of rain and then snow. So the only mistake I made this year was I didn't tape the floor well enough before putting things in it. So after it rained and snowed, um, water had leaked in uh, the floor and gotten some of the carpet wet. So I had to rip it back up and do a better job of taping um, some of the cr uh, where the plastic overlapped. So just make sure you tape really well. So now that I have everything in, um, I'm cutting the plastic for the sides and it's the same process of just using screws and staple gun uh, to pin down the plastic and then I'm going to tape um, over the creases so no water can get in through the cracks. So next is creating the door. This part's really important, but it's hard to give advice on. I just recommend putting it on the side of the greenhouse um, and I have it straight into my house so I can just walk from my house to my greenhouse uh, make it big enough so that you don't have to bend down too much, but the door doesn't have to be enormous. Uh, you could use a solid piece of material, but I used um, just wood and the same plastic uh, to keep it lighter. But on this side of the greenhouse, I don't get light anyways. One important part is creating a door frame. Last year I had troubles with water coming in through the door, so this year I created a door frame to seal out water and um, air. So this is a better look at the retractable roof I put into the greenhouse. Um, there's just times where the greenhouse gets too hot and you need to let in fresh air. But also the main reason is I wanted to let in full spectrum sunlight. 
the polyethylene plastic would normally allow UVB and UVA light to penetrate it, but the greenhouse plastics are mixed with something that block these frequencies of light um, to give the plastic a longer life. And also plants don't utilize UVA or UVB light. But I'm not using my greenhouse to grow plants. I'm using it um, for the winter months so I can go outside and get sunlight. Um, I do want the UVB and UVA light, but it's not present during the winter. Um, UVA light will be present um, during solar noon for some of the months. Um, and that'll be nice to be able to crack that open. Then towards later spring, I will start to get more of the UV light and be able to crack that open and utilize it. But during the winter months, um, I actually might put a black light to get UVA and a reptile bulb to get UVB light inside the greenhouse in combination with the infrared light that I'll be getting from the sun. So I finished the greenhouse. One thing um, after finishing it that I changed was I used to have a two-person outdoor patio furniture uh, bench in there for seating. But we use this a lot, and for me, Liz and two dogs, it was pretty tight. So I put in a full-size couch, um, which is absolutely awesome. We spend enough time in here to, for it to make sense. Dogs are having too much fun on this nice sunny greenhouse day. It's 12 degrees outside, but uh, it's actually 80 degrees in here. I got two space heaters running to add a little extra heat, but uh, it's feeling pretty nice in here with the direct sun. Um, the dogs like to spend most of the day in here if the sun's out. Uh, there's no, um, when you have two Boston Terriers, they never stop playing, especially when they're, one's a puppy and one's two years old. So this is an earthing or grounding uh, wrist or ankle band that I wear. Um, this cord's connected to a wire that um, I hammered into the ground outside. Um, I also have a wire going into my cold tub too to ground the water in there when I'm cold tubbing. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of benefits to earthing and grounding. Uh, it's kind of to recreate being outside on the grass. Uh, when I'm in the greenhouse on this carpet, I'm not grounded um, in any way like I would be out on the grass. So this is just a mimic being out on the ground. Alright, so some of you don't know that the freezer in my greenhouse I use as a cold tub. I fill it up with 50 to 55 degree water um, and then sit in there for 20 to 30 minutes uh, once or twice a day uh, to do CT or cold therapy. Um, and I do it in the greenhouse because I think it's important to do cold therapy with infrared and red light from the sun. Um, but I'm going to get into more details on this on my next video. I think there's just too much detail to add into this uh, video already. Um, and then I also, uh, I don't always do cold. I sometimes actually make it a hot tub. So uh, it's not always a cold tub in the winter. Sometimes I'll have it at like 100, 104 degrees. And then I use a sous vide device um, to heat it up and keep it at that temperature. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it inspires some of you to make your own greenhouses. Uh, winter can be really long um, and it's hard to get sun. So I highly recommend um, considering building your own greenhouse and it's a fun little project. Um, if you like this video, hit like um, and subscribe if you want more of these videos. I'm going to um, try and put out one a week and the next one will be on my cold tub. See you guys.